This is Todd Money again, Webb Anholtz. We're here to talk about the R-Series sprayer maintenance. Uh, we're gonna go through maintenance intervals and things on an R4060, uh, very similar to the R4045 and 4044, but we have some hub differences and some minor differences we'll go over. So on your initial arrival of your machine, you're gonna run your machine for 100 hours before you change your engine oil. The engine oil at that point on a 4030 is a 250 hour service. Now if you have a 4038, a 4044, a 4045, or a 4060, it is then a 500 hour engine oil change if running a John Deere engine oil and filter set up in it. The fuel filters on these machines will be a 500 hour service. When you change them for the first time, the second filter, the one closest to the cab, will become a longer filter like the front filter. When you get your machine, you will run it for 50 hours, and then you will change your hub oil in this machine. Um, on your 4030s, 4038s, and 4044s, this is a 250 hour change after the initial 50 hours. On a 4045 and a 4060, this becomes a 500 hour service. This has 8140 synthetic oil in it. The reason we recommend changing that is, as you can see, this is new oil. This is what old hub oil looks like. The oil is real cheap when it comes to hub repairs. Hub repairs can get up into the five, six thousand dollar range. The larger two models, the 45 and the 60, carry uh, just right at four quarts of oil where the smaller units only carry 2.1 quarts so it's not a lot of oil to keep that hub cool especially if you're roading these vehicles a lot it's very important to mind your hub intervals and even if you don't have the 500 or the 250 on it in a year we would recommend changing them annually it's just a good practice and it's not that expensive another daily service on this machine would be greasing the suspension on your struts and the boom grease points. We'll show them here in a little bit. Um, machines that have the Lincoln Luber on them are equipped with an auto luber that will do everything on this machine but the drive shaft. Uh, it is recommended running this mobile oil or grease. We recommend the mobile GL1 grade grease. Um, it is a little thinner viscosity than the grease that we normally use, the TY6341. This also does not stain the Lincoln Luber Reservoir, so you can see it when you're out of oil, and it flows a lot better in cooler temperatures because we're trying to push all that grease through quarter-inch grease lines on the machine. So if we sold you a Lincoln Luber GL1 grade grease. Another daily service on this machine would be opening this petcock here to drain any water out of the tank. An annual service would also be this air dryer filter that spins off, you spin a new one on. This helps get the moisture out of your suspension products that are run by air, just similar to a semi. The grease circs we were talking about on the boom, we have one here and one here on each side. And then there's one on the inside on each side. And then there is one zerk here, one zerk here, and one zerk here. And that is all the zerks there is on this machine for the boom. We have two daily grease zerks on the spindles, one here and one here. The tie rods are 100 hours on the tie rods on the steering. But the ones that we see get neglected are the daily ones on the spindles. And then also, this is a little different on the 45s and 60s. We have four individual grease zerks on the suspension, but on the smaller ones, we have a grease bank where you can get all four grease zerks at once. Uh, and that's four grease zerks per wheel on front and back. That's a daily grease on the suspension. A 250 hour service on this machine would be to check our shim gap. If you can pick up on this brass pad, it is loose. You should have a 60 thousandths gap between your axle and that shim pad. The book recommends running the tread out to 140 inches and jacking the machine off the ground. To properly tighten that, you loosen these three nuts and you torque these bolts until they hold 185 foot pounds of torque. Then you back each one of those bolts off an eighth of a turn and then tighten the jam nuts back down. 
On your tread adjust while you have it out, we recommend spraying it with this synthetic dry lube. It will make the tread slide easier on the tread adjust shims. Even if you do not move your tread, it is recommended that you still tighten up your tread adjust because as you drive through the field, the axle rocks and it wears on those shims, which can cause damage and break the bottom of the axle out. Another 100 hour service would be this grease zerk right here. You'll have to remove the belly pan. And the other end of the drive shaft is up through this hole behind the flywheel. You'll have to remove the shield and reach up in there. I use this fitting that I've made to grease the front drive shaft. When you stick it up in there and it clicks on, it ends up right at the frame so you can easily grease the front drive shaft. On the new R-Series sprayers, the hydraulic oil change on them is now a thousand hour change along with the hydraulic filter. There's a hydraulic filter here and then a canister filter here. Right here would be where you would drain the hydraulic oil out of the tank. And those machines use the 1030 Turf Guard oil that is environmentally friendly. And it also helps with the cooling package that it dissipates heat better because it was designed for the air-cooled lawnmower engines. It also has an emulsifier in it where a normal hydraulic oil may uh, capture moisture. The Turf Guard separates the moisture out so we don't damage any of our motors or uh, the pumps on the machine. So behind that cover there, the black cover, that is where the air filters are located on this machine. Those are a 500 hour service or annual. If you have an early R-series sprayer, it will take different air filters than a later R-series sprayer. Here again we have our depth tank, 7.8 gallon depth tank, and our 150 gallon diesel tank. We're still at about 2% use rate, depth to diesel. It's important to use high quality def in your uh, tank. Make sure it's clear and not cloudy and good quality def. A daily service on your machine is to make sure the dirt, as like Todd has shown here, it was mud at one point built up around this airbag. We need to make sure they're clean. As you can see, that mud hole, or mud, wore a hole in this airbag, which then made it so the suspension would not inflate. It's a common problem, especially in the spring and wet muddy conditions. Uh, this is something that gets neglected. That one didn't have very many hours on it before it failed and just lack of keeping that clean. That's baked hard just like a clay rock. We'll go out to the booms now. Uh, this is a new boom design for the R-Series. We really have had a lot of good luck with these booms. This is aluminum breakaway. It's a one-piece aluminum I-beam construction with uh, a fore and aft breakaway. So you can run into your light pole it'll break away backwards also with a 15 degree upslope to clear the obstacle but also if you back into something it clears forward so we can clear that obstacle also but it's kind of been a give and take on the booms on this new design because we went away from the grease points and we do have pins and bushings now instead of grease circs on the boom helps with serviceability, but they still need to be taken care of. We have some examples here of boom pins and bushings that have been uh, worn and we've replaced them. We're kind of seeing, depending on how they're treated, uh, even as early as 500, some as long as 1500 hours before we have to replace pins. Pretty common to do it annually. Uh, it is a little bit of a job, but you have to support the boom to do that but uh, it can be done in your shops if you choose to we do them all the time but they're a eccentric pin with a head that's different size so they're kind of self-centering and the key is to get them replaced prior to the uh, nylon bushings wearing out because if we get to this point and we're steel on steel we're going to oblong that hole where the bushing and the pin goes and it won't hold a bushing anymore so it's important to get to them before we get to a failure two breakaway pins front and back that have to be these are the pins that take the most abuse that we change the most of because of the outside of the boom we have them flopping up and down hitting terraces uh, those need to be replaced we also do have bushings in these breakaway spring controls also Again, on your midsection pivot, we have those pins and bushings also. No grease zerks, so these have to be uh, 
maintained as well. You'll pick up the boom and see if you have play. It's real easy to tell. This one's new, so it doesn't have any play in it. But there's a neoprene bushing or a fiber bushing in there uh, on your midfold as well as your cylinder. If you replace these bushings yourself, you need to make sure you put the thrust washer on the right side. The thrust washer needs to be on the bottom side as right right here. If you do not put that on the right side, this piece will actually wear into this piece of the boom. We'll kind of go over the electronics. You know, we've kind of beat on this hard the last few years. Is you'll see the no pressure washer signs. Um, this is a boom height sensor. No matter if it's on a sprayer, dry machine, or whatever, you really got to watch these connections and getting them wet, especially with high pressure water. We don't want to just focus on those with the pressure washer. We, I would rather see you use high volume, low pressure to keep them clean. But if you are pressure washing them off, stay away from the electrical connections. If we go to the back side, this is a exact apply machine. And we have 98 of these nozzle bodies. Each one of them has an electrical connector. These nozzle bodies are about 400 bucks a piece. So it's real important to keep these clean and not uh, pressure wash them and, and uh, make them rust quicker. We have a whole section on exact apply that we'll go over. This just happens to be an exact apply boom. We've gotten away from the issues with the boom fold eyelets. They really updated the clevis pin on these boom tilt cylinders and also on the boom fold eyelets. We don't have as many issues with that as we used to. Still a bushing uh, that needs to be maintained in the tilt and fold cylinders. One thing we see a little bit of uh, back here on the rods, these are our sensor rods for our boom fold and tilt sensors here. And once in a while, if you have trouble with your auto fold, these little uh, rods will pop out of their ball and socket. So those are easy to check. And if you're having issues, check these first before you give us a call. They can be popped in or we carry the replacements at our parts location.